Hey, welcome to the Rock Live podcast. As you can see, things look a little bit different today. We have some uh, more people with us, but today, pay attention as we are going to be covering part number three of Attitudes and Action series, talking about hypocrisy. Uh, yeah, it could be a heavy topic. <laughs> Antonio here. I'm with Pastor Dan. Pastor Brian uh, is joining us, and we are very excited about this topic. I just want to know, Pastor Brian, how do you feel about being invited to be the special <laughs> guest when we're talking about hypocrisy? Yeah, I, mean, I just as long as there's I, not like. Are a, you wondering if there's like some ulterior motive or something like that? Yeah, you know, like what's going on? You're I came ready, ready just in case Pastor Antonio was going to try to attack me. He's, and, <laughs> he's on the defense already. Yeah, you're already getting me in trouble. Here, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a beautiful time of the year. I was sharing with Pastor Brian. Uh, who's a sports guy it is just like prime sports time we are as of this recording we are a couple of days away from game one of the world series uh, mm, we are going to wow. be kicking off mls soccer playoffs yeah we're dead in the middle of the nfl season high school football high school football's going yeah two more end. games friday night lights yeah. is going mm. on uh hockey's starting back up yeah wnba just had their finals NBA is starting, so it's a it's Man, a fun time. Do people follow the WNBA? Is well, that bad to say? Can we? Are we going to get canceled on no, one of the it's, platforms? It's, it's actually been an important question. I mean, it's definitely <laughs> gathered some more traction. No, this I, season. I, it's coming up. I, I've yeah. noticed it a lot more, and I'm just like, oh wow. Yeah. You know, it's, no, it's it's been 20 plus years for them. Yeah. So wow, that's crazy. They're, uh, they're, it's you know good for women's sports. So yeah, no, it's awesome. I I, I uh, am proud of all of these teams. Yeah. Um, th there's a lot of stuff in the news right now about uh, teams that are not going to play other teams that have men on the teams pretending yeah. to be women. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think women's sports is important. I think things like the WNBA is important yeah. for these ladies to be able to express themselves and Absolutely. show their athleticism and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. you know. No, it's great. great. They're, they're great athletes. And yeah. so uh, getting getting some of the accolades that over a long time have yeah. deserved. Yeah. So Wonderful like stuff. I said, game one, World Series. Well, I mean, what's it's a shirt, man. Yeah, what's going on here? So I have my Fernando Mania shirt. I mean, like I'm going to a, a, a <laughs> clergy luncheon today, so I'm wearing like a little bit more I, I dressed up. I brought a different shirt, but I wanted to I wear I looked at you. I'm like, I should have just my, brought uh, a change of clothes or something. You know, yeah. Brian's over here in a Hawaiian shirt. I feel totally out of place. <laughs> uh, this is Fernando Venezuela. He just passed away a couple days ago. He's man. a Dodgers legend. Yeah. And Dodgers are in the World Series, so... So when I was a kid, I used yeah. to love the Dodgers. Yeah. I had, I, I loved Fernando Valenzuela. Yeah. I loved yeah. uh, Daryl Strawberry, yep. Yep. Nolan Ryan when yep. he was in, around, you know, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And yeah. we went to the Rangers and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But yeah, I mean, that was my team. Yeah, no, they, they were great. And uh, his rookie year, they won the World Series. And um, you I was know, one year old. Yeah, I That's wasn't it. even born yet. Fernando Mania started, but he uh, he was uh, iconic in a lot of ways, and for all of baseball, but especially for me being a Mexican American. Yeah, he was like it was a big deal. Now, now, so so Dodger Stadium, you were saying went. Uh, we were talking yeah. beforehand. Yeah, was, was in an area. So Chavez Ravine is where the Dodger Stadium is at, and that area it, the, it, before the stadium was there, it was neighborhoods that were predominantly Latin American, Mexican American neighborhoods, and so when the Dodgers wanted to build their thing, they kind of kicked out the people. It was controversial. There's been documentaries about it. Um, you know, kind of booted them out in a not cool way and really hindered relations between the Dodgers. Obviously like, Oh, we don't like the Dodgers because you kicked this out of kicked to build your out, stadium. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then they bring, uh, there was a scout who's down in Mexico sees Fernando Valenzuela play. He was like 18 years old, 19 years old. And they're like, we got to get this guy. Well, they bring him on and he's a new sensation. All of a sudden, you know, now today, every, I think 50% of the Dodgers fan base is that it? Is Latino. I mean, yeah. like our whole church. Right, yeah. With the exception yeah. of a few. Just, right. There's some angel fans. Like, Woo! And yeah. the Dodgers is a roar. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and and they'll meet me at the back door if I yeah. say something about the angels. I mean, they're <laughs> like uh, they're like, Pastor, we're not gonna kill you because you're our pastor, but yeah. you just need to watch yourself. Well, so we went to um w the marriage ministry, we went to an Angels game and people came up like we would have gone if it was a Dodgers game. <laughs> 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 it was like we have triple the price, you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. You got to pay to play. Yeah. yeah. Dodgers, is, it's a show, man. For sure. So uh, Dodgers and six. If it's Do – I was telling Stephanie, Dodgers and six, the s game six is on Fernando Valenzuela's what would have been his birthday. Man. So what a way to go. Well, I hope they pull out the win. That would yeah. be pretty historic and yeah. uh, a nice hat Absolutely. tip. Absolutely. You know, so. Yeah. Yep. Good well, stuff. Uh, quick, Quickly, quickly, because we'll, we'll finish off our little breakdown. 
What is all time favorite athlete? Michael Roth. Michael Roth. That's my son. There you go. Yeah. Hands down. Pastor Brian. I'm not going to be as good of a father and say <laughs> uh, Aiden Schultz. I, I, I'm a Jerry Rice. Uh, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 Come on. Way. Yeah. Classic. I mean, the guy is the best athlete of all time over all sports, right. in my opinion. So yeah. when, I, when I was a kid, I had everything Will Clark. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, he was amazing. Yeah. You know, I had all of his cards, rookie card, everything. Yeah. I probably still do have it in my garage. There you go. So it's for sale. Um, yeah. <laughs> And so I, I, I would say either pay for my kids' college. There you go. You know, <laughs> Magic or Kobe, because that oh, mama yeah. mentality, yeah. man, oh, just, yeah. it just kind of Magic's the man. Yeah, we can't get into the Kobe Jordan debate, Who's right? The greatest, right. LeBron. Yeah. yeah. No. Also, this is what I say. I, I was a, because I was a Laker fan in the '90s. I couldn't really appreciate Jordan's greatness because I was just a hater. Yeah. Because I was a, oh, a Magic man. guy. Yeah. I was a yeah. Lakers guy. But now, second time around, I was like, oh, I don't want to miss it with LeBron. So, so I you can, got your Bronny jersey? So I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on that note. On King that James. Note, King cause, James. Because we all know that he wouldn't be on the team <laughs> yeah. if it wasn't for dad. But we'll just move on with that. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. Shots fired. Man. Ho- hopefully, you're still listening. Let's get yeah. into yeah. this more spiritual <laughs> Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. If, if the, the women's <laughs> stuff didn't offend them, we're going to get them by the end of this yeah, that's right. little breakdown. Yeah, right. You know, the sport, this topic is supposed to be the lighthearted yeah. part of the no, show. No, man, there's yeah. probably people hating us right now. I'm not listening <laughs> to them ever again. Good. Sports it's fun. Anyways, well, oh, we are man. not here to talk about sports. We are here to talk about um, part number three and probably the last part of the series. Yeah, actually, it is, yeah, because, the, the, you know, I let the verses, the scriptures are telling me what they're, yeah. they're speaking, right? You want the scriptures to speak. And so that's why when we were talking mm-hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago, I said, I don't know if there's a number three in there. And, and as I read the scripture, I said, oh, there's definitely a number three in here. Yeah. Um, uh, so the scriptures that we're coming to up next are talking about circumcision of the heart mm-hmm. and um, and the reality of the inner man and that sort of a thing. So we'll, we're going to we're going to switch into a new series um, so yeah, this, this wraps it up. It, it almost seems like a sour note to wrap up a series on the hypocrisy, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it is absolutely necessary for us with the attitudes and the actions, because mm-hmm. that's been kind of the emphasis of the, yes. the series anyways, is that right. do they line up? You can have the right attitude and do the wrong thing, right. or you can have the wrong attitude and look like you're right on the outside, which yeah. hypocrisy, right? Yeah. Well, you, even the stories you were telling us, the reason why it's an important topic is because it's. It's where we live. It's we we as believers, we love God and because so we love people and the challenge we can have with people is this attitude of hypocrisy. Like I said, right. we, we meet people, we want to share our faith, we want to be good coworkers on our job, we want to good, be even good parents mm-hmm. and they're constantly faced with this idea yeah. of hypocrisy and yeah. living up to or being well, well, practicing what yeah. we preach is kind of the, po- one of the points. Yeah. I think one of the things that, I mean, you started it off this, like the whole do as I say, not as I do. Right. And yeah. how it even starts in the home. And I think that's, you know, I, I've always uh, been challenged with the fact that felt like God was always challenging because there's there we're setting our kids up. In, in the home or our families up a lot of the times when we do the do as I say, not as I do, because we're not saying that it's bad. We're saying it's bad at a certain age. Right. right? You're too young to watch this show, this movie, this, right. You're too young to, to drink this, but so we're setting a standard and saying, Hey, when you turn 21, Hey, when you turn 18, Hey, when you turn and we're, and we're paving the way and, and, and not realizing what we're doing, setting our children up and our families up for, uh, to, to enter into something that we don't ultimately want them to enter into. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I, I, it's, it's definitely an important topic and I, uh, and I, you know, as Christians being the light and it starts in the home. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I would, I would wholeheartedly agree. And I think, you know, growing up and hearing my parents' stories and hearing what hypocrisy did to them yeah, and to see the way that it pushed them away from, uh, you know, healthy living, you know, then threw them in a drug culture, drug life, obviously it was the sixties and the seventies. And so there was a lot uh, of other factors going on and everybody has their own walk, but I wonder how much greater of a life my parents would have had if there wouldn't have been that hypocrisy in the home that, yeah. that, that said, do as I say and not yeah. as I do, right? Um, and, and, and you're exactly right. When you're 18, you can cuss. When you're 18, you can, you know, beat your family. And, and all yeah. the things that my parents endured, um, you know, and, and even just the going to church on Sunday, but then, you know, Monday through Saturday, being a totally different person, 
you know, kids see those things yeah. and, and they don't do as, as we say, they, they become who we are because they're seeing life modeled in front of them. You yeah. know, they're, they're sponges. They're, they're absorbing all information and knowledge and they're creating their personality. I think psychologists say it's about like five years old yeah. that they're actually formed their personality and their, their character in many ways. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, without the regeneration of the Holy spirit, it's hard to change. Yeah. You know, they're, they're already set in patterns and that's why we see a lot of the problems that we see is mm-hmm. because of the hypocrisy right. that says, well, I'm a Christian, but you know, I'm going to well, live I think my you own mentioned way. It. Hypocrisy could be such a mirror. Yeah. Right. And especially our children. Like yep. what we're modeling, like, why are you yelling at your sister? I turn around running to step on a Lego. I told you to put it like, Oh, and then you find yourself <laughs> screaming at the top of your life. Like, Oh, you're, it's been modeled. It's yes. been yeah. shown for sure. And I've obviously said other things, mm-hmm. but I find myself doing these things. And yeah. th- again, this, th- I feel like with, because of how we're constantly compensating, it just puts us in a hole as believers trying to overcome. Sorry for what your priest said to you. Sorry for what this oh, preacher man. or this, leader who said they were falling like we're constantly having to kind of and and I, I would imagine that there is you know there's things we can do in our own lives to walk away from that but any thoughts on even just uh when we're sharing our faith or talking to others who have some of these hurts or have some of these challenges where you don't feel like you're constantly just having to apologize but still recognizing their challenges you know um i've i've encountered people throughout my ministry, you know, I've been pastoring here at The Rock for over 20 years, been the senior pastor. October marks nine years nice. as a senior pastor. Wow. Nine years. Yeah, nine years. That, so. that has gone fast, fast, super yeah. fast. But um, but yeah, I mean, you encounter people that, that have, uh, you know, experiences in the past with uh, faith leaders, and whether that be a small group leader, a pastor, a youth leader, you know, there's there's different levels, obviously. And, um, you know, the biggest thing for me is not to apologize. The biggest for, thing for me is to love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the Bible says to let love be without hypocrisy. And I think many times, you know, I, I can't fix what they did. And even if I apologize, it doesn't heal the hurt. Yeah. What I can do, though, is, again, model what real love from a faith leader looks like and bring real support, bring real encouragement. Um, you know, I think that's why uh, avenues like Breaking Free are so important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've, we've had people... Uh, you know, the, the last video for Breaking Free was a couple that had deep hurt. I mean, they were invested in their church, helping out in forms of leadership, mm. and were completely hurt and betrayed and just went through a rough spell. They came actually back to the Rock because they were, they were here with us for a long time before they went to that church and helped them plant, helped them build, and all that kind of stuff. And so when they came back, they came back limping and yeah. hurting. And, um, and, you know, I didn't apologize for, for what their pastor did. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that it happened. Yeah. Uh, but... But really, all I did was just, hey, you're back. Welcome back. Mm-hmm. Love you. You know, yeah. we're here for you. And, um, you know, uh, listen to their story. And, and, you know, they went through Breaking Free and were able to, to you know, get that, that encouragement, that help that they needed to process what was going on. And, and I think that, that that sincere love and that sincere support mm-hmm. will bring people back to that place of healing because God is, is not a hypocrite, right? Yeah. Man's gonna let us down, mm-hmm. but God will never let us down, and that's where we're trying. We're we're growing at this. Uh, have I done everything right? No. Have I been a hypocrite? Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like let's, let's just be real. You know, yeah. uh, he who is without sin, let him cast the first mm-hmm. stone. Right. Yeah. We're, we're all battling in an area where we're trying to line up our practice with our profession. Right. I, I profess to be a Christian. I profess yeah. to be against sin and all these things, and yet in my practice, I yeah. find. Right. That, and, and that's where we, in Romans, you know, definitely in the later chapters, when we get in chapter 7 especially, the very thing I want to do is the thing that I don't do, yeah. and the things that I, I you know, it, it, it's just that wrestling with the sin nature, the spirit and the flesh fighting against one another, and that's where love overcomes all those things, right. you know. You know, Pastor Dan, one of the, uh, as you were saying this, I think also looking at retrospect, the responsibility that we carry as the body of Christ and not putting so much stock into a man sure. as well. And I think because even, you know, we get these deep hurts because we elevate so much mm-hmm. and, and set ourselves up for failure because we put the expectation on pastor Dan as a man who will never sin and a man who will never fall short. Right. And the reality is like you just said, have I ever been a hypocrite? Of course. Right. Yeah. There, there, I think, when we understand, do we do it intentionally or do we understand that there's a sin nature, right? That the, the intent is to never live as a hypocrite. And I think that's, 
it's important to identify that because what we don't want to do is make people feel like, okay, so you fell short. So you, th there's no hope. Right. Right. But understand the, the goal, right. Is to continue to grow, continue to seek God, to continue to get yourself in a place where never intending to be a hypocrite, refining ourselves through life. Right. And, and understanding through the word of God and, and, the application of the word of God to get ourselves into a place where we grow in these things. Mm. But, but understand that if we can't allow, if God is the only one who is perfect, right. Yeah. And he's the only one who's not the hypocrite, then we can't walk away from church because pastor Dan did something to offend me or pastor Antonio did mm -hmm. something to offend yeah. me, you know? And so just, do you have any, any thoughts on, on, on how you would, uh, try to encourage people to, to, you know, obviously we, we understand that the leadership of a church holds great responsibility. Yeah. Right. And the word of God says you are, uh, double judged Man. for the things that you teach. Right? right. And, and, and the, the, the way that you express yourself, but also the, the way that people should look right. That, that they, they seek first the kingdom, right? They seek after Jesus when you come to church and what you're putting your emphasis on or your weights on. Right. And not all dependent on Pastor Dan to live a life that right. is perfect. Well, the Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church, follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah. In other words, if I don't follow Christ, don't follow. Yeah. Right. We we uh, we don't put our stock in man. You know, some trust in chariots. We'll trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Yeah. There, there's a different emphasis of the believer's life that we're not looking to man we're looking to god mm -hmm. now we respect and we honor um we we pray and we love uh but we understand that that all men are sinful uh that all men are flawed in the flesh that we're going to be wrestling against these things uh some do a better job than others you know like you said we, are we intentional about it sometimes yeah we we enter into sin willfully because we do the wrong thing we make the wrong choice we rebel against god's commands sometimes we do it unintentionally like you said you know there's, there's a trigger i stepped on a lego or i hit my ha ham you know hammer on my thumb while i was pounding something all of a sudden those words come out and we yeah. sin yeah you know and uh and that's where i love what the psalmist said when he said um he said forgive me of my hidden faults and keep me from willful or presumptuous sins as well. Yeah. Because then I'll be blameless. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we understand we all stumble in many things. There's things that we're going to wrestle with. The battle is is not to look religious and veil, yeah. you know, yeah. the sin yep. that, that's going on and lurking behind the scenes with a, a good picture on the outside. That's mm -hmm. the play actor. Right. That, that's the mask that, that we put on and that we wear. And, you know, we saw the dangers of that in the message this weekend. We saw as well how to overcome that and we can overcome it by the power of the holy spirit yeah yeah so you you kind of the message had a couple of parts right yeah the overcoming yes and then the, the well first you led with a few dangers the dangers yeah uh, uh, that we can find ourselves with hypocrisy and then how to overcome would you say was it a life of hypocrisy or finding ourselves being a hypocrite uh, or stumbling blocks that would be um but one of the things that I had a question on was one of the dangers that you had expressed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as it pertains, uh, let me, I wrote it down. I don't remember being responsible for leading people astray. Yes. Uh, and so right away, I'm like, oh, I mean, like, uh, yeah, that's absolutely dangerous because like we uh, we started off talking. If we are hypocrites, especially as leaders, um, you can lead people with you like, oh, OK, th well, they're doing it. I can do it. Even though they're saying this, they're doing that. It must be OK. And oftentimes we're looking for examples or modeling mm -hmm. of how this is done. And so uh, a, a question I have g uh, goes on the other side, because I think of um, people who are. I, I don't know whether they've been believers for a long time or they are new to faith, um, but now I, I don't want to be a hypocrite. And so what are where is the line that they maybe would feel like or where should our line of responsibility for what we can do in our freedoms as believers, right? Mm -hmm. We have freedoms of believers. We're not under the law. Uh, there are certain things that are, that are not sin, but maybe could lead people astray in that, well, whether it maybe be music, right? There are, you know, some people like country music or things that maybe in and of themselves <laughs> are not. <laughs> um, I mean, well, so th one of the things with music, I think about it this way. Someone said this is like, oh, that's true. Like if it's not spiritual, it's secular. Yes. Right? So happy birthday is technically a secular song. Mm. 
And so we sing that in right? Christian homes. Yeah. And, and There's a reason why I don't like that song. <laughs> it's world. It makes so, perfect sense to me now. Pastor that's Anthony. why we sing you're a Thank special you. person. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but so in other words, why I bring it up is because in and of, in and of itself, some of these songs are not right. demonic or they're not taking you down bad avenues. And now that line can get really muddied, but for some people in their liberties, uh, they, they can listen to some oldies or some songs that, aren't, aren't going to offend them where to some though, I mean, they've burned all their records. They have a conviction of like, I'm not listening to anything that is not on Christian radio or that is not absolutely uh, a, a gospel music or a gospel yeah. track or record. So the not leading people astray, where, where is the line of responsibility that believers have in terms of our weight of not leading someone astray? You know, we already brought up wisdom and maturity when it comes to children, right? Yeah. And, and I think with believers, too, we, we need to understand that everyone that we're around is, is at some level of wisdom and maturity in their, their walk with Christ. Mm-hmm. New believers, many times, like you, you mentioned, um, even myself, when I was really getting on fire for the Lord and, and was growing in the things of God, I, I mean, I broke all my secular CDs, yeah, I, I burned too. all my comic books, all that kind of stuff. Um, now, were there songs in those secular CDs that I could listen to with a clear conscience right. and without sin. Absolutely. Right. You know, I was going extreme because I, I knew that I was going to follow God in an extreme manner. And, uh, and there are people that we will encounter in our church or in, in life that are on that journey and they're in that extreme mode. Yeah. And so I think wisdom says, Hey, you know, uh, d- just like a baby, right? We don't feed baby a steak, yeah. right? We, we might start with milk, then we'll we'll move over to okay well they, they need some food but they they need it ground up right or, yeah. or blend it or whatever yeah. it is and we'll, we'll feed it to them as applesauce or whatever uh that we make for them then eventually we'll start to introduce foods that they can handle you know yeah. yep. remember my kids they had these little stars that they had that would dissolve in their mouth you oh, know yeah. the little yogurt yeah, things yeah. the circles and all that and so we would give them that to to start and then and then eventually you build up to those things that are more solid because they they're able to handle it in their body and, and I think for the, the life of the believer, where's the line? I think that's where, hey, what, what is the wisdom? What is the maturity level of this person? Yeah. Man, th- right now, they're going gangbusters for God, and so they're saying no secular music whatsoever. So when I'm around them, right, right I'm not going to play secular music right. around them, you know, uh, some smooth jazz or, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever, yeah. country, yeah. Uh, any of those things. Because they're going to be, because they understand yeah. that they're they're even in the jazz world, even in the, the country right. world, even in, you know, yeah. Uh, whatever top forty or whatever it yeah. is, that there are songs that that aren't godly, right. yeah. and that a believer should not be listening right. to. Yeah. You know, why would you put that into your ear gate mm-hmm. and allow those things to roll around in your spirit? Well, I just listen to the beats. Don't <laughs> lie. Come on, man. Even if you are listening to the beats, those yeah. things have a way of working their way in to where all of a sudden you're singing about some girls behind or you know yeah. Yeah. whatever it is. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I remember when Aiden was real little and. Uh, we liked country music. I always liked country music and it got to the point where I had to stop listening to it because my uh, little son at, at a young age, he's singing red solo cup. Right. And it's like, <laughs> this is not a song. Right. And in your mind, you don't think anything about it, but then now here, my son is singing this song. And it's like, this isn't a song he should be singing. This isn't something right. that he should be uh, joyful about. And, you know, I think that's the, again, the responsibility and, and, and even realizing, well, I shouldn't be listening to this yeah. song, you know, um, but you become accustomed. And I think that's the, the hard part is in some areas there are liberties. But when you let your guard down, you have to you have to be very careful about what comes on next. Right. Yeah. Because there are certain songs, you know, we can we can all think of some oldie songs that really have no meaning. Right. And then we can think of the oldie songs that have all the hidden meanings. Yeah. You know, all of the drugs and yeah. all of the alcohol Absolutely. and all of the sex yeah. Yeah. and those types of things. And and when we're allowing those things in, you know, um, being responsible, I think, you know, for for the others around, but then also for our own selves, because, you know, I mean, we go back to what Pastor Jeff Osborne talked about in the men's breakfast, like the standard is the standard. What, standard, is what standard. standard do we allow that eventually affects our yeah. children and the people that we love and the and the, the reach that we have, mm-hmm. you know. And we so, want to be careful not to say, hey, guys, because you're a baby Christian, you can't do these. Once you become mature like me, you can do anything. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that, that's not the line. That's not what we're saying either. Right. Uh, you know, Jesus, when he was speaking to the disciples, he said, 
to them at one point. I, I haven't shared everything with you because right. you can't handle it yet. Right. Yeah. Right. And and I think that's the thing about hypocrisy. If you if you're revealing the truth, if you're if you're not veiling anything, mm-hmm. if you let someone know, you know, right. like hey, you're in a uh, position in your maturity in Christ where you're you're not able to to handle these things. You just keep going where you're at, right. you know. Yeah. Keep keep grinding, keep growing with the things of God, and that's not to say that that the superior, mature Christian right. can handle <laughs> secular music. Right. It's just where someone's at right. in their life, right. to where my freedom in Christ, yeah. I can listen to a, yeah. a secular song yeah. as, as long as I know, yeah. like you said, that there's not veiled meaning or things like that. Right. Sometimes some of those old love songs. Yeah. I mean, my yeah. my 14 year old listens to crooners and swooners, man. He's listening <laughs> to old Blue Eyes and yeah. Dean Martin, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and I'm like, you go, boy, you know. <laughs> And, and so, uh, so there's nothing wrong with that, right. uh, you know. In his walk with God, he's mature enough right. to, yeah. to listen to those things, and he's yeah. not. Uh, I mean, I thank God he's not listening like, you yeah. know, some no. gangster rap yeah. like his mom used to. So, because <laughs> we oh, tried listening yeah. to some of our old stuff, and I'm just like, honey, turn that yeah. off, yeah. you know. Is, yeah, even my old stuff, man. AI, oh my goodness sakes, man. I, I, we tried listening to some some songs, and I was just like, uh, wow. Yeah. That was a, you know, that tanked. <laughs> I definitely had to get rid of my old playlist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, again, I know hypocrisy is more than just music or even, well, I mean, television and movies, things like that. Yeah. But uh, just in our uh, our everyday life and how we're conducting, again, as, as for the edification for the listeners and viewers and really for all of us, why I thought it was a great, uh, such a great word, Pastor Dan, is because going back to the attitudes, Right. If our attitude doesn't adjust towards not want toward it, towards living truthfully and yes. uprightly, then I will find myself in these actions where I'm living as a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anyone desires that because not only does it hinder our personal walk with God, it hinders our ability to share our faith and evangelize. Uh, but it re- our, our standing with, with Christ, we are not where we want to. I don't think any of us desire to be far from him. We want to be close to him. But we are going to find ourselves in our action, where our actions are set, putting us far from Him. Not because He's pushing us away, but rather we're finding ourselves. It just gets easier to. Yeah. Well, I, I listened to this song, and now I'm going to go into this song where it does yeah. have this, or well, you know, it's that slippery slope. I, yeah. In my liberty, I can have one beer, and then one beer turns back. Where you walked away from not drinking for many years, yeah. yeah. And then now you got mature in Christ. Now I can have a beer again. And then I go back now down the right. other way. Well, and I think one thing that comes to mind when uh, when I hear like even the attitudes and the actions. Right. So then what is the attitude behind your action? When we there, there are certain hills sometimes that we tend to want to die on mm. because because it's my freedom. I can mm-hmm. do this. Mm-hmm. And so if you can't handle it, that's between you and God. Right. But what's our attitude behind wanting to listen to a certain song or behind right. wanting to have a certain drink? What is it that's causing us to get to a place yeah. where somebody else is struggling and we're not willing to forego something yeah. Why is that so for the important? salvation yeah. and, and, and the betterment of somebody else. And yeah. I think those are the, the, the questions that you ask. And that's why I think it's so cool that, that we, we go into this attitude and actions and you get to the hypocrisy because usually there's an attitude that's causing the action of hypocrisy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what is that? And, and, and yeah. challenging yourself on why is this a hill that I want to die on? Why is this a freedom that I feel like I need to embrace so much at somebody else's expense? Well, can I throw yeah. this thought in here? You know, we talk a lot about uh, needing to be kingdom people and, and kingdom culture. Some things are kingdom culture, right? And kingdom culture even supersedes American or Western culture, where yes. we love our liberties and we love our freedoms, and it's just kind of what we know, right? Where we know what we can have. If we want it, we can go have it because yeah. it's our right and and those kind of mindsets. But kingdom culture yeah. supersedes that, and those things are uncomfortable to think that we couldn't do something. While it is very kingdom minded, it's very not American minded. Yes, <laughs> you know it's not it's not American to think I can't go do something, but right. yet we are kingdom first. Well, the kingdom word for that is meekness, right. and and it's not weakness. A lot of times people th- say they're they're meek and and and. It's it's really sad that nothing really rhymes with child except for mild. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So yeah. like when they talk about Jesus yeah, and they're right. like, oh, he was meek and mild, right, right. the Christ child, <laughs> and, and it's like everybody remembers that from yeah. the Christmas songs right, and stuff, right. you know. And so so when they think about Jesus, they think you know, oh, he's not the bold, he's not right. the hot, he's right. he's the mild salsa, you right. know, that yeah. no one wants. Um, there's no flavor, there's no spice. Yeah. 
but but that's not Jesus. Obviously, mm-hmm. Jesus could have called legions of angels. Right. He could have used his. I mean, he says a word, and a whole mm-hmm. you know group of soldiers just draws back and yeah. falls to the ground. Uh, he went to the cross. He endured the cross. That's not weak. Right. right. I mean, if anything, he's the man's man. The yeah. guy was a, a carpenter, yeah, right. you know, which yeah. really was an artisan. I mean, Jesus, in order to do what he did to work with his father in the family business, probably had to be very strong, yeah. probably had to lift big yeah. rocks and, yeah. and was building things. I mean, look at a construction worker's right. back and yeah. arms and hands right. and all that. Yeah. They're very strong, right. you know? And And so Jesus would have been that guy. He was an average Jewish man. He wouldn't have been... You know the most handsome of the bunch, or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, the Bible says that that there was no nothing to his form right. or or his appearance right? that would draw us to right, him. Right. right? He was an average Jewish man, but he was still a carpenter, mm-hmm. and probably would have been very strong physically. Yeah. A- as well, we understand how strong he was mentally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, to come up against all of the questioning and all the things that that came at him, and then the anguish of the cross that he went through—not just the physical side, the spiritual side. He was very strong. Now, when a Christian realizes the freedoms that they have and yet chooses mm-hmm. to submit themselves to the authority and the power of the kingdom of God, yep. that's not weakness, that's meekness. It's strength under control, that's good. Yeah. right? It, it's like a, 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 a muscle car, if you will. You know, I remember when I used to change oil for uh, you know, Walmart Tire and Lube Express Center yeah. in Myrtle yeah. Valley over there. Um, I I uh, I remember I, I used to love when I'd see different cars coming in and love to drive different cars and so that was kind of like a, a fun job for yeah. you know twenty something at the time, and uh, and I remember that a guy came in with an old Camaro probably like sixty nine or something like that Camaro, I mean you you just heard the thing driving up from down the street because the roar of the engine, yeah. he backed it in I mean the guy got out without a shirt on he was <laughs> chiseled and ripped, shaved head, yeah, yeah, yeah. threw a, a white t-shirt on and went inside and sure enough they brought out the keys to me and were like bring this car now i i had the fear of god in me because if i scratch this guy's car he's come at you know (laughs) take his shirt off and beat the tar out of me you know (laughs) so uh so i but i was excited to drive the car and i remember the car wanted to get up and run Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like just the engine was with i i I could bear i had to like lay down on the brake just to get it to stop lurching forward when i started it up and put it into drive you know those are fun cars to drive very fun so i (laughs) with fear and trembling brought it into the bay and changed the oil on it but man when i got out of the bay and when i had to go back and park it again i just said i'm gonna tap the gas (laughs) yeah you know what i mean i'm gonna tap and i and i tapped the gas and that thing the front of that car just lifted up and and you heard it roar you know like that so I quickly put the brakes on because I, I didn't have that long in the parking lot yeah. to go, you know. And then I backed it into where the guy had it because yeah. I, I wanted to make sure I left it where <laughs> yeah. he wanted it, yeah, you know, yeah. just to make sure he wasn't <laughs> mad at me, you know. Yeah. Take pictures. And oh, <laughs> man. If I'd have had a camera phone at the yeah. time, I would have done that. That was no, before camera like phones, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Take, <laughs> yeah, take a so photograph <laughs> and go to the Walmart yeah. uh, Express <laughs> photo. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it there. This is how I found it. This is how I left it. But but no, I mean, so I think about meekness, right? That that engine had the power yeah. to do zero to 60 yeah. in probably, you know, five seconds or something like that. I mean, it was a muscle car, and yeah. yet it was submitted to the driver. Right. And, and I think that's for us, too, with our freedoms and with what we could be doing, you know. And, and even, you know, a lot of times hypocrisy says, I deserve this. Yes. I deserve a drink. I deserve to be able to cuss. I, you know, I got so much frustration. I deserve to look at pornography yeah. because I'm just frustrated yeah. sexually or whatever it is, you know. I deserve this. But then on the exterior, there's this religious, well, I'm good. I'm good with God. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I've got the freedom in Christ to do, you know. Yeah. And, and, and so these attitudes and these actions are inconsistent and there's hypocrisy. But meekness says, I'm going to submit so my mind frame. I don't deserve anything. I deserve hell. Yeah, that's good. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so I'm going to submit myself and the strength that I could have, the freedoms that I could have in Christ to the Holy Spirit, to the Word of God, and even to my weak brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? That's what the Apostle Paul said. If, if my eating meat causes someone to stumble, I'll never eat meat again. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I, I don't want to ask where the line is. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, because, <laughs> man, there right. might be something. I'm uh, just glad my friends don't have a problem with eating meat. Just <laughs> yeah, <that>. really. <laughs> right. No, it's, it's true. And, and I think those are some of those, those topics that, like, like you said, um, who knows? You know, he, he set the bar. Yeah. Well, right. you know, it's interesting when you look at uh, Pastor Antonio, you and I talked yesterday about uh, Peter, right? right? Jesus tells Peter, hey, time's cut, drawn near. Go get yourself some swords. Right. Yeah. He's like, oh, I got I got swords. OK, good. 
right? Then he comes out, starts wielding it, when and it's like, hey, put that down. You live by the sword. Like, are you willing to lay down mm. your liberty? Right. Something that I actually gave you permission mm -hmm. to go buy. I actually encouraged you to go get, mm -hmm. right? But are you willing to lay it down? You look right. at Paul when he was in prison, singing praises to God, his chains fall off. Yeah. He had the ability to flee. Mm -hmm. And had, you know, I mean, who wouldn't think that that yeah. that, that was this not the, the will, will of God, God yeah. right? But he stayed. For, and, I, and I think when you're talking about lying, now you look at Peter. When Peter was set free from prison, right, right. and let out. At what point do we say, you know, it, you have to determine with God what he is speaking to you, what he's challenging you with, and keeping that open line of communication. Mm -hmm. Always with God, always with humility, always with meekness. And I love that because it's through that... You're, there's always going to be op an opportunity to just take that car out in the parking lot, open it up, go for it, flip yeah. it back around. Could have took it on the street. Yeah. Nobody the wiser. Right. But then what happens when you get in that accident? Yeah. yeah. Or something or the guy hears it like, oh, I know that sound. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's my exhaust. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. <laughs> He's coming. Yeah. So I, I just think, you know, it, I think it's good. Like. We draw these lines, I think, always keeping that open line of communication to God. And God, what is it that you're asking me to do in this season with what's being presented in front of me? Because we know what the word of God says. And even I have a right to do this. I deserve this. I've worked hard for this. Right. Um, you see people in sobriety. I mean, I come from sobriety. Right. Yeah. So, well, I haven't had anything in so long. Right. I've earned right. this. Wow. But you even see, like, even in, in the, the, the world of sobriety, in Narcotics Anonymous and, and Alcoholics Anonymous, and when I used to go, you would see people, they would have these, these uh, they, they would find themselves 20 years sobriety, have a drink because they deserved it and they've earned it, right? But the person that they're mentoring that's got six mm. months in their chip, they fall. Wow. Why? Because you feel like you deserve, but then now this person goes back to beating their wife or losing their home or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And the weights that that carry and how much more when it's a cost of eternal life. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, in closing guys, I think, you know, it, it was so well wound round up because it wasn't just this like, you know, gloom, like, well, don't be a hypocrite. You know, there's the, the, what we can do to glorify. And I loved your last point was live to glorify. God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in living to glorify God, we will find ourselves avoiding being a hypocrite, avoiding ourselves in hypocritical, hypocritical positions. But like you said at the top, hey, something we're all struggling with. Yeah. We don't desire to be this. But as we pursue glorifying Jesus and all that we do, we will find ourselves back in alignment, back in a place where we are living as we should and not in this dichotomy of, well, sometimes and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, again, overall, I, I was very encouraged by the message. I know we've heard some great feedback. On it. You yeah. always get good feedback. Uh any closing thoughts or preview of maybe our next uh, news? Are we doing a series or another? Yeah, it'll group be a series. Um, there's, there's. I, I'm not sure again how long it'll be. I, it's funny. Like the past, I think three series. I've yeah. gone three each. You yeah, know, yeah. so that's kind of funny. So maybe we'll have a three part yeah. series. You know, <laughs> but um, but no, we're gonna we're gonna talk about circumcision to the heart. Okay. And, and you know, I think it's interesting that that we were talking about hypocrisy and some of these attitudes because the next very next statement he starts talking about circumcision, which is a cutting away oh, wow. of something that's unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. And so there's some attitudes, yeah. Yeah. some actions that need to be cut away from our life so yeah. that we can be the true Jew, yeah. right? The, the, not one of circumcision of the flesh, but right. one of circumcision of the heart. And that's what God desires for us. Amen. So, uh, yeah, I think there's some exciting things ahead of us and um, definitely looking forward to what God brings out in those things. So, yeah, yeah come stay tuned with us, be with us in church, come join us in person and uh, listen to podcasts online. Yeah, again, I, we always ask, Share, like, subscribe, uh, comment, ask questions. We'd love to. I haven't got any new questions, but we'd love to address those. I mean, we'd come up with some, but maybe, you know, there's some that you might have. Uh, Pastor Brian, any closing thoughts? No, I, 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 you know, this has been, I mean, when you said you were going back into Romans, this is going to, this has been fun. And I, I've really enjoyed even the way that you've been doing a lot of these. It's almost like a, uh, the do's and don'ts we talked about, right? These are the dangers, mm -hmm. but then here's the yeah. what you have the ability to overcome right? right and how you deal with it and i and i just think it's it's been really encouraging and i'm excited to get into the circumcision of the flesh and this is i you know i appreciate being invited to come into 
today and uh, partake of the, yeah. the sports conversation. <laughs> always, always a good time. So if you stay tuned all the way to this point, we're glad you did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for not we getting offended. Yeah. Yeah. Hanging with us. God bless you guys. Love you. We'll see you soon. Yeah.